Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 12, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So as ever, let's crack on. First one is a game. This is Screenbound and it is a game about being distracted. It is clearly inspired by people walking around on their phones in the real world and still functioning as human beings. But you play a 2D game within a essentially a connected 3D game. So what you do in one affects the other in real time. So the developers, uh, Crescent Moon Games, are known for innovative game engines and this is obviously the next one they're doing. Uh, watch out for it. Not out just yet, but um, if you like these sorts of games, by the way, like Viewfinder, look that one up. That was really cool last year and it's a bit like sort of um, Mario paper uh, for instance where different dimensions come into different plays but uh, like that one watching out for it if you have £325,000 spare and you would like an autonomous electric helicopter thing then you can now have one as of the 1st of April this is the Ehang EH216S. Uh, it is available, as I say, uh, two people can fit in it. It will do 100 kilometers an hour, so 62 miles an hour. Uh, has a range of 22 miles, so not super long, but uh, obviously if your commute is uh, maybe 10 miles, then this is for you. Um, I say out in April the 1st. Uh, this is the first time it's been available outside of China. And by the way, that's not an April Fool's joke. I did check. Uh, this is news we've kind of all been waiting for, like what's happening with that Neuralink test that they're doing. So this is uh, Nolan, who Nolan answered the call to Neuralink a couple of months ago, uh, and Neuralink were looking for their first human trial of their implant, which you can see here. It goes into the motor cortex at the top of the head, and Nolan unfortunately had an accident a couple of years ago, a diving accident, which made him paralysed below the shoulders. So um, perfect to answer the call of Neuralink. And this is the first video where you're seeing actually the progress there. So in this laptop that you're seeing, you'll see a little dot moving around. That's the cursor being controlled by Nolan's brain. And it's really, really quick and quite um, high fidelity, shall we say. So playing games, you can move the chess pieces around when the person doing the video says, hey, should we just turn off the music? Goes up to the top menu, pulls down the menu, turns off the music. Um, and pretty much the rest of it is just about training it how to work. So really interesting updates. There's not really too much detail in it, but it's really interesting. Now imagine that fidelity of control being applied to maybe an exoskeleton so that you can now just put somebody in an exoskeleton and walk around pretty well. So um, we're watching that one pretty closely. Uh, this is news from Manchester, leading the world in digital ceilings, or at least uh, leading Europe. So this is Europe's largest digital ceiling in the Printwork Shopping Centre in Manchester. They've had a £21 million refit, and part of that is putting this huge screen on the ceiling and make it into a, a storytelling extravaganza. So it's interactive, so you can you know control it with your phone or whatever you want to do as well. Uh, it's immersive, and by the way, it's free. So as long as you go to the shopping centre, you can see this sort of thing. Now there's a version of this in South Korea, for instance. Um, so this is, but this is the biggest one in Europe. It's nice to see Manchester leading the world uh, uh, and out of home. So if you want to go and see that, um, controlled by Ocean Outdoor. If you'd like to have something on it, go and have a chat with them. NVIDIA uh, had a big keynote where they showed lots of cool stuff and chips and things like that. And one of them was Project Groot. And uh, now Groot is about robotics and they've got some kind of cool shots here. They're obviously all made up for the, the actual video. But what it's got, it's got three things in it. It is their big project. Um, it has a thing called Isaac, which is a kind of how to train a robot system platform has another thing which is called uh, Osmo, which is a sort of a cloud-based uh, deployment at scale sort of platform as well. And they also have some GPU chips that are AI optimized so that you can actually do this sort of stuff. So they've got things like, you know, robots understanding language and understanding what to do with it. Um, but likewise, they've got it learning from human activity. Now, if you saw this video, by the way, and you're going to try and break into NVIDIA, then it will probably give you uh, second thoughts because it does look like the future. Uh, that's exactly what they're after. Um, but NVIDIA uh, leading the world in robotics training, especially humanoid robotics. Very interesting. Uh, this is an interesting research paper, or um, one of the more interesting research papers, uh, about this kind of thing that we've been talking about for a long time called smart dust. And this is kind of the closest we've come to it, really. So this is a Synapse-inspired wireless network. So that little, little chip thing, about the size of a grain of sand or a third of a millimetre, something like that, um, that actually uh, can sense things in the outside world and get its energy from uh, an external transmitter like a Wi-Fi uh, router, that sort of thing. And all it's really doing is it's waiting to get a signal from something. Maybe it's sensing light or maybe it's sensing uh, sound or whatever it is, or maybe a chemical. And what it then does, it just pings 
And as long as another one of these sensors can hear it, it then cascades back to the central place to actually process it. So unlike lots of other things which have to be all synced up to actually work, these ones just fire when they need to. So very much like synapses. And that's the big breakthrough in this one. So they're self-powered essentially, but also they work like a brain. Um, so uh, that's a big breakthrough. So well done to uh, researchers in Brown's University in America for that. That is interesting. Now, finally, this has actually been out for a long while. Saw this, lots of people have been getting this video, I think on the, the internet. Um, however, I didn't know these existed. So you need to know if you didn't. So this is a rotating water slide. I think the first one was in China many years ago. Uh, this was America's first one, which I think opened two years ago. Uh, this is uh, Medusa's slide wheel at Mount Olympus. Um, so that's, there you go. Interesting. So the way this works is you get this rotating first stage of the uh, water slide. Uh, you sit in one of these big hoops. Obviously, it has to be timed when you go in. So hence why it's all a little bit automated. There's a conveyor belt that chucks you into it. Um, however, it then rotates and you go around this big knotted loop and eventually it spits you out into the main water slide, which I think is amazing. Didn't know this existed and thank God stuff like this exists. Um, brilliant. So there you go. Hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully it was useful. If it was, give it a like, share it with somebody. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, appreciate that if you did and I'll see you next week.